26 year old retired baller. Not baller, bro. Okay, Not baller, bro. <laughs> Dude, ballers, have you, if, if you go to Dubai, that's baller shit, yeah, bro. I went there and I was humbled. Uh, for sure. I was There's humbled. To this. Okay, but you're retired. Yeah. So you've done very well in life at a very young age, and this is what most people aspire to be objectively on the outside. So I want to get really deep into that because obviously I would want to ask, like, how could anybody replicate your success? But everybody's unique. You all had unique angles, and there's a little bit of luck for everybody. So it's kind of hard to digest that. But totally opposite of what I just said, what do you think about AI? Dude, so AI is going to displace so many people. Mm -hmm. I said it yesterday on Jordan's video when I was coming here because it's my first time in Breckenridge, and I look forward for us to do these more often, these trips. But you know when you do like the self-tag at, mm -hmm. at the airport? It makes sense, right? You don't need as many people ticketing. You use automation. But then you're supposed to take your ticket. You're supposed to now apparently bag it yourself. And you leave it on the counter for the lady to, mm. or the guy or whoever, to basically put it on the little line that takes it away. So I go and I hand the lady my little sticker. And I hand her my suitcase. And she's like, no, you need to put the sticker on the suitcase. I'm like, OK, that's fine. Why are you here? Well, I'm here to supervise that you put the sticker on the suitcase. And I looked at her and I was like, you will be replaced by AI. And the reason I said that to her is because- You told her that? Yeah, straight up. Dude, I love it's that. funny, it's funny because, and it's true, she looked at me I like, what? Like, that. she's like, wait, what? Like, didn't make sense. But I said it to her because it made sense. It made sense that the value that she provides to her company can be replaced by automation. And I think uh, the level of intelligence that it's going to be able to have long-term, not short-term, I think that there's an extensive period of growth what we're seeing right now is sort of like ground rules and mm -hmm. you see this automation kind of playing mm -hmm. because sometimes chat gpt does some dumb yeah, yeah. dumb Confident stuff right yeah. and it plays within the sandbox of the creator so the creator sets the rule set right uh, as to how the ai can process information and what it can't talk about or can't touch um so as they begin to expand kind of the api or other companies begin to develop their own products and as entrepreneurs and uh, like us that are kind of like on more of a come up stage and not that established big organization kind of structure, which I personally don't really enjoy anyway, uh, we can start creating as tools become uh, more available, we can create our own AI and train our own AI. Mm -hmm. Because if you wanna compete in 2040, you think you're gonna be competing with human mental power? No, dude, you have to com be competing with your AI, with your robots, with your automations, with your softwares because that's where the where the future is headed and it's going to be huge and if you're not on it you're going to miss out so the skill set now is not just blue collar that's going to be replaced i think white collar is going to be replaced doctors lawyers faster way faster faster than blue collar it's more because important. it's dude creating it's not just ai but you need to create robots and machinery to to power what would be manual labor mm -hmm. you need not only software you need hardware mm -hmm. But on white collar, dude, most of this stuff is now digital. Mm -hmm. You only need software. You do not need to go into hardware necessarily. So I think a lot of these jobs are going to get just absolutely demolished. Dude, you will not need consultants anymore. You can consult the most intelligent consultant there is, mm -hmm. right? If you teach it that way. But I think people need to start utilizing it. If not, they're going to be left behind. I think it's powerful. How do you position yourself like short term right now and then once things do change how does our world still fundamentally operate because this could threaten capitalism if so freedom much. it could it threaten freedom bro beyond capitalism so short term next few years there's like i feel like there's gonna be like phases of ai so yeah like for first, sure this first phase that we're hitting right now because it's here and yeah it's good and it's like hot too and anyone can use it it's hot dude and so it's like happening and so obviously there's a lot of like value arbitrage opportunities to make a little short-term business but eventually one ai is going to rule them all so short term phase one what should people do? What's the most optimal way they can like actionably protect themselves? I guess. Yeah. So how you can participate, participate per se in yeah. kind of like the AI revolution, we'll call it, <laughs> yeah. is you need to start, if you're an entrepreneur per se, you need to start building companies of the future. Okay. Technology is accelerating so quickly that if you're building companies of today, tomorrow they'll become irrelevant. So you need to build companies of the future. You need to build companies that are going to be relevant tomorrow and that the evergreen period before that becomes irrelevant is extensive. For example, uh, the first introduction of the internet. If you started building products and companies when the internet started, mm -hmm. before AI or crazy automations were introduced, you had, what, 20 years, 15 years? A pretty decent gap oh, yeah. right there to build. 
I think we're going to have a decade where AI is still very okay. Yeah, for sure. Because you're talking about, but maybe I'm wrong, dude. Maybe I'm wrong. Like we don't know the capacity uh, that currently exists, True. and the fact that what is currently publicly available is so powerful has to be a like uh, a clue that there is something more powerful out there at you know private Google hands, bro. One. This is a hundred percent one, that got public, 100%. one of the one of the members um, from Capital Club sold one of his companies for fifty million, and he was a software guy. And I asked him the same question: What do you think about AI? And he's like, "Dude." You have no idea. If you think what they released in the public is the actual yeah. stuff, they've just they gatekeep ninety nine point nine percent of stuff. So the amount of power so that's scary. already out there, it is scary. And if you look at, for example, BlackRock, BlackRock uses an AI called Aladdin to do forecasting and predictions. And they've had this model being developed over the last several years, and that beats and trumps every other software and automation and any other person that's, that's playing the point. game like they could have had such an evolved ai for 100 so trading dude. markets and if it's you don't, actually a true brother, ai think about the advantage you have to have to make that much 13 trillion plus dumb, whatever in assets dumb. under yeah. management you you don't just get there by by chance you need to have massive amounts of leverage or super intelligent and, people and they're the first big company to figure it out and now they're the biggest company by a long shot and so that could still work at a micro level for like the up and coming entrepreneurs 100 right? i think and i think it's also understanding bro is the fact that software and robots uh, naval ravikant talks about it he says we're using bots and automation they're all like little micro workers and employees that mm -hmm. do not sleep they do not rest they're there 24 7 they don't complain they do what you tell them to do and they're reliable yeah. and that's super powerful and that's going to rule out a ton of people he had a good tweet that this is like the a calculator but for english and writing mm. he tweeted that today banger wow tweet. banger Involves the man but it's very interesting because a lot of people aren't entrepreneur entrepreneurial and so i feel like i talk to a small audience when i talk that way but that's our interest so the everyday person actually let's take it this way 18 year old kid three years ago we'd ask someone you need to get hard skills you need to provide value because yeah. no matter your network if you're not valuable to someone how, even if you meet luke Belmar, how can you help them but, but it'd be like copywriting or video or these hard skills that you could provide value to someone where does that what should someone be learning if ai is going to do all this there's a few things that I, I think are extremely important that i think uh, AI and technology will never be able to replace, which is human connection, okay. which is community and uh, emotional connections. I think uh, that like transcend momentary like happiness. I'm talking about deep relational emotional connections. I think that these also create culture, right? Culture is dictated and created by by people, and I think that there's a, a human factor and a human element that allows the world to go round. And even if AI is created and yes, it learns by itself in the near future, it teaches itself, it has an origin point. And that origin point has uh, biases, right? Because it's been created by somebody that is set it in such a way where, for example, you go to chat GPT now and you ask for something and it says, it could tell you literally, my creators do not allow me to yeah, yeah. go up beyond this, this border, or this is not something safe. Well, who told you that it's not safe? My creators told me that mm -hmm. it's not safe, right? So you always have that bias in, in, in kind of a preconceived um, data that comes in that could potentially inflict um, pendulum swings where AI isn't neutral, which is the, the ideal utopia. But I never see it really becoming neutral. The purpose of open AI is so that they can like let people at least start using it and benefit from it, but they can control it and try to set standards. Yeah. Obviously that's like PR. I mean, ask them about, ask them, we, we all know, for example, example, right? I, you know me, I'm big on spring water, right? I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I hate fluoride in the yeah. system. I'm big on non like GMO foods. Do not eat like crazy shit like that. Don't eat fast foods. And the other one is like seed oils, which is important because you need to op be optimal. Correct. But if, capacity you, if you if you if you ask chat GPT now, like what what yeah. what's the yeah. what is the ecosystem of or what's your thoughts on seed oils? Right. And what's kind of like the habitat around them? It'll tell you all the positive shit mm -hmm. and it'll be like, yeah, but, you know, you got to be careful with them. And it's like anybody that truly understands seed oils will tell you, do not consume that. So you are playing within whatever rule set that it's been. Why given. is that information suppressed? Why is the opposite narrative promoted? Well, I think it's very simple. It's been happening since the since the dawn of kind of controlled civilizations, which is you need to keep your citizens and your slaves, you need to keep them in check, right? And the best way to keep them in check is to keep them weak. 
And we've kind of transitioned from manual labor kind of being the main force of slavery to now it being more of like mental and energetic and time-based consumption. And the system kind of realized me beating a slave with a whip, I'm not getting the most out of them, right? So what do I have to do? I'm going to trick them. I'm going to deceive them into, we can talk about the entire money system. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's kind of like- I want to go to that soon. Yeah, I think that that's going to be a, a good topic. But circling back, I just think people need to, uh, if you're an 18 year old, I think you need to be developing skills. Do social skills become more important? Yeah, bro, social skills, because now you're interacting with people and the people that understand how the game is played, they understand that everything is built in rooms with people, right? And they are the ones that are deciding. Whether it's in 100 years that AI is gonna be the deciding factor, I don't know. There's an anime called Psychopaths that I recommend everybody watch. And it's this AI that is like, a hundred or a thousand brains of different people of society, oh, criminals, billionaires, peasants, everything. And it forms what is supposed to be the controlled neutral mind, but it's not neutral. It's extremely biased. And in the anime, it kind of shows you that that entire narrative of a credit system, mm. of a mental check, of a daily pill that they need to consume to mm. manage their mental level That's and cool. their mood. So civilization has always flourished when the working class are subjugated and they are enslaved. And that's how you build societies. Unfortunately, that it, societies are built on the back of slaves. And today we just have modern day slaves. Once you learn that these companies or these businesses don't have your best interests in mind when they're propagandizing you with just marketing ads, but commercials, ads on Facebook, I mean, dude, those are not there to make your life better, even though that's the feeling you're supposed to get so intentionally from the ad. Can I, pull, can I tell you something crazy? Yes. So I went to, <laughs> please. okay, so I go to Mike, Michael Phelps' Instagram and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, there's something super crazy. What the fuck is Michael Phelps doing promoting, doing a paid partnership with who? No way. Pfizer? With Pfizer. So here you have Michael Phelps saying, I'm doing a, part, a paid partnership with Pfizer. It says ad, hashtag ad. And what, what does he categorize himself with? It wasn't until recently that I learned my struggle with depression. How many people have depression, right? So it's a big blanket statement. The next, the next character, right? Who's this chick? Is that the Lindsey Vaughn lady? No, look at the... Yeah. Oh, it's pink? Yeah. yeah, so you have pink. And once again, <laughs> can't believe I just mixed who's the paid, paid partnership? I mean, they're getting after Pfizer. Sure. And what does she say? Uh, she says, unfortunately, I was unaware uh, of this for the first time when I got COVID-19. What was she unaware? That she had asthma her entire life. How many people have asthma, right? So it takes all these different people to promote different kind of macro scenarios it's like my medic design it's like what the yeah. fuck dude it's if if this was such a crisis why are you running ads it makes no sense people should be running to the stores if they if if, if people were dying and falling dead right next to you and this it's kind of like america isn't it it's a tricky situation with, with brother pharmaceutical ads yes america is really 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 bad uh, i think really about bad. i think about 60 to 70 percent of people in the united states have chronic illnesses hmm. whereby 100 years ago it was sub 10 percent i th this is like i be kind of believe real. in this because it's like mimetic desire like humans are mimicking creatures if i see someone do something and i think it's cool subconsciously i'll start like doing that same thing whether it's the way they move their body the way they said something tonality like that's how we learn as kids we're just copying our parents movements and so that theory makes a lot of sense and so if you guys don't see this stuff, you don't understand what we're talking about because you don't, you haven't studied psychology. You haven't studied human behavior. You're all on TikTok. You're all distracted all the time. And I think that that is the best skill you Which, have. When and the, reason, the reason you are on TikTok is because somebody understands the psychology of, exactly. of a 13 year old and TikTok is designed to keep you Every on the app. decision. When you scroll to refresh and you slide your thumb down and it does the refresh, it's supposed to mimic when you pull the roulette right in the casino because you don't know what's the next uh -huh. video that's going to pop is. up yeah. right so you get a dopamine hit so every time you swipe down like the casino cha-ching machine right dopamine hit dopamine hit dopamine you are literally not addicted to tiktok you're addicted to dopamine hits and if tiktok had their best interest in mind or all these other social media platforms they wouldn't be hiring psychologists no. to figure <laughs> out how can we keep people on our app but i understand the social dilemma but i understand that. the business side of it right TikTok is competing with Snapchat. Snapchat is competing with IG. So there's Fiduciary a lot of duty, you know? there's a lot yeah. of technocrats, right, or or heads of these big companies that don't necessarily 100% fuck with the other companies, or they want to be the top dog. So you have a lot of rivalries, and I understand the capitalistic side of it, but we also have to be able to address the other side of it. 